Hello guys, Solve Electronics here. So I've got a short update for you guys. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're wondering why my miner is back in its box with a return label on it. Well, I have to send it back to Helium Mart where I purchased the miner uh, because when I bought the hotspot it was sold as having an SX1302 concentrator inside. But I noticed on the teardown video uh, I had a concentrator that had an EEPROM on it and the only concentrator to have an EEPROM on it is the SX1301, which is rather inferior in comparison to the SX1302. So to be certain, I checked out the minor logs and sure enough, it's definitely an SX1301. So I questioned it on the Helium Mark Discord and I asked others if they had the same issue as well. And many people came back to me and said they also had an SX1301 as well and they started to get a bit concerned. I raised the problem of a missold product uh, with Helium Mart and they said that they would speak with Broen about it, which they have, uh, and they will make uh, an official statement about it. Eventually, a couple of days later, I got a message from customer support at Helium Mart um, and they said that they will replace the concentrator in all of my hotspots, which is fantastic. Um, but they had no ETA from Brown, uh, who is sending them the SX1302 concentrators. Uh, a few weeks later, I received a message from uh, the support guys again. And they said that the concentrators have arrived uh, and that I could send my hotspots to them. That's great, but again, there was still no official statement from Broen. So all of the buyers uh, that assume they have bought a device, you know, a hotspot with a 1302 concentrator, which is very much superior than the SX1301, um, they don't know if they are an eligible candidate for a replacement concentrator. And I want to add that you know, um, a compensatory option for a missold product is a legal requirement in the EU. So for them not to offer an official statement about that is quite sad, I, I think. Um, but what annoyed me the most was when others emailed Broen and asked for an exchange on the concentrator. Instead of Brown offering them a solution, they responded to them with a sugar-coated explanation as to why they chose the 1301 concentrator and how in their test environment it worked just as good as the 1302 and no reason to exchange was necessary, which I'll be honest is a load of rubbish because um, another user contacted Semtech personally uh, who makes these concentrators um, and they said that Semtex said that the 1302 is far superior than the 1301 and even recommended using the 1302 instead. During this time, Broen updated their website to state that the hotspot came with a 1301 and 1302 options instead of only stating a 1302 option. But currently, no seller offers a concentrator option on these devices. So yeah, that was pretty pretty depressing from that side. Uh, in the meantime though, because of this whole you know episode, uh, I was looking for a way to see if it was possible to replace the stock concentrator with a new one, obviously a 1302 or the 1303 concentrators that are now available. In doing so, I met some pretty big obstacles which I unfortunately was unable to find a solution to. The problem in the beginning was that just dropping in a concentrator doesn't work uh, as the hotspot you know it needs to be directed to use the correct configuration uh, for the concentrator because each concentrator is you know slightly different um, so that didn't work dropping it in just didn't work uh, I didn't know how I could connect to the hotspot in order to change some configuration files that were necessary for me to do so in order to get it to work. Um, but eventually online, I found a document that states that it is possible to connect to the hotspot using SSH, 
using the root username and a password, which we don't know, over port 168. But in doing so, unfortunately, when I tried this, the hotspot asks me instead for a public key rather than the password, which I obviously don't have, but Browen do have. So I sent them an email asking for the public key, but they didn't respond to any email that I sent them in regard to this topic. So I went my own route and in the end I found that if I placed the hotspot into this you know, sort of debug mode, I was able to connect to it using ADB and a mail to mail USB cable. That's great. So now I can manage the device and change the SSH password and authentication methods. Voila. I have access via SSH into my hotspot. A few weeks later though, and about 24 hours later, after I released a video on YouTube of how you can do this too, an update was released and blocked the ADB access and they reset the SSH password and authentication methods, rendering the device basically inaccessible. So I'm currently working on this to regain access again. I don't know how long it's going to take me. Um, I have a few ideas of what I want to try, but you know, so far it's not looking too good. But what concerns me the most about this whole endeavor though, is the fact that other hotspot manufacturers like Rack and SenseCap, uh, you know, they've, they've got lots of hotspots out there. Um, they all allow access to their devices so that you can do your own management of the hotspot, um, you know, change some configuration files and doing different things like that. You know, after all, it is only a lightweight version of Debian Linux and a Docker image for Helium. So it's nothing special, or at least it shouldn't be. But during my limited time access browsing around and speaking to people, I found out some particularly interesting information on the hotspot, like where the updates are coming from, how the device is checking for updates, and all of the scripts that are used by the device and additional web pages that can be accessed that aren't linked to the web UI, like the Lora Log web page and the Debug Log web page, where you can find some additional information about your miner. I'll leave some information on that in the description of the video below. It was also made known to me though by another user that the Broen is also sending information back to them about the miner itself like MAC addresses, firmware information, and things like that. So for them to block access to SSH so that only Broen has access to the device and not provide the end user with access to a device that they bought kind of concerns me, considering I have no idea about other things that the device could be doing or what could be implemented over some kind of firmware update or whatever, or is currently ongoing. Because Linux is a very powerful operating system and if placed into the wrong hands, um, you know, of the wrong person, it can be a huge privacy concern. So what do I think so far about the hotspot? Well, so far it works like any other hotspot and it performs pretty good. Uh, I'm yet to do more evaluating on that side. I have a couple more videos of this, of this topic I want to release. Um, but these videos will come in the future because like I say, I have to send this back to Helium Mart who are going to do the concentrator replacement for me. Um, but other than that, I do have my concerns about privacy and about the way Browen is conducting themselves by not communicating anything to anyone about the fact that they sold a hotspot as having a 1302 concentrator when actually it had a 1301 concentrator. The fact that they blocked ADB and SSH access to the device and the fact that when they were questioned about this topic, they just gave a sugar-coated explanation as to try and justify the, what, the reason why they did what they did. So guys, I hope that update was informative for you and I will be releasing further videos in the future on this hotspot. Um, but for now guys, stick with me and I will see you in the next one.